Welcome to Beat Source Tech. My name is Mo Jax, and today we're doing something we haven't done for a long time on this channel. We are paying some attention to Tractor. Yes, Native Instruments have just released Tractor Pro version 3.6, and along with that, a new subscription service, Tractor Pro Plus. So today, we're going to take a look at both. There's no doubt that Native Instruments are one of the biggest and most respected names in the music production world, but I think it's also fair to say that their DJ software, Tractor Pro, has lost some momentum in recent years. This is both anecdotal, I see it out there, and it's borne out by the Digital DJ Tips Global DJ Census. That report doesn't represent all DJs, but it does reflect trends, and on there we see Tractor dropping from being used by almost 20% of respondents in 2019 to around 12% in 2020. I would speculate as to three main reasons for that decline in use. Firstly, we see a lot of electronic music DJs, Tractor's main audience, dropping laptops in favour of standalone options generally. Secondly, NI haven't been working with third-party manufacturers very much to make their software work with a big variety of the latest exciting hardware. And thirdly, Tractor just hasn't really seen that much development in the past few years. Indeed, there have been numerous times when I fully expected NI to just announce that the software was being killed off, so Glacial has the pace of upgrades been. But things have changed over there recently, and it seems like the team are getting fully behind their DJ offering once more. And I'm very happy to see it. Tractor remains a fantastic piece of software, doing lots of things better than the competition, and NI's own hardware is, and has always been, pretty awesome. We'll talk about what's new in version 3.6.0 before we look at the roadmap that they've released. Prior to the new release, NI announced Tractor Pro Plus, which is a subscription service unlocking new features which won't be available in the regular version. The sub costs $4.99 US a month or $49.99 per year. You'll need a license for the base software where too, this is just for extra stuff on top. Another benefit of the subscription is an extra long three month trial of either BeatSource or BeatPort streaming if you don't use those already. Obviously there is a conflict of interest for me with that, this is a BeatSource tech video after all, but I do need to mention it. I know lots of you watching this will balk at the idea of another subscription, but the way I look at Pro Plus is this, as long as the important features come to the base version, we'll get to the roadmap soon, then I don't really mind. The stuff you're getting in the subscription package right now is not enough for me to justify the sub if I wasn't doing this job, but for you it might be. If so, I think 5 bucks a month is pretty reasonable. So what are those new features in 3.6? Well, firstly there's a new limiter, the Ozone Maximizer from Isotope. It's a kind of brick wall mastering limiter which promises transparent limiting with less pumping as things get loud. You can set the threshold and other settings to tune it to your own taste. I'm in two minds about this one, to be honest. On the one hand, if you're going to use a limiter in this way, then a really good one like Isotopes is the way to go. But on the other hand, as DJs, we mostly play tracks which are already mastered with similar tools, which means we're further compressing material which is already compressed. And if you push things too hard, which is not difficult to do, then they get real messy real quick. I do fancy trying it out with some gentle settings for my sets where I play lots of classics from the 70s and 80s. I like the idea that a good limiter could help those older joints have a more cohesive sound, but without elastic beat grids, Tractor isn't ideal for that kind of music right now anyway. So I guess this is one you'll have to play with and decide if you like it or not. The next big plus feature available now is the Pattern Player. This is a kind of drum machine slash sequencer inside the software, and it's pretty neat. At launch, there is just one set of sounds based on the classic 808 drum machine. Because it sits within an effect slot, it's not replacing a deck like the remix decks do. That means almost any tractor hardware with effects controls works with it instantly. No mapping is required. Use one knob to control the overall volume, another to choose one of the eight predefined patterns, and the third one pitches the sounds up and down. The final knob sets the decay time for the sound. To switch between instruments, you have the previous and next buttons.
assignment of the pattern player can be done in three ways. In insert mode, it's affected by the volume, EQ and filter of the deck that it's assigned to. In post fader mode, it's unaffected by those, so will carry on playing as you transition between tracks. And in send mode, which is for external mixing setups, it functions more like an extra deck with its own unique output. There is a duck button for use when you have the pattern player running on top of an existing deck, which side chains the underlying track to highlight the patterns more. I found myself having the most fun when I assigned the pattern player to a channel of its own, and then assigned another effect slot to that. This gives me full control over filtering, EQ and effects for the player. Overall, I think a lot of DJs will get much enjoyment out of the pattern player. Unlike remix decks, which I've never been a huge fan of, there's no preparation involved. You turn it on, tweak it, and it just stays locked on beat with zero fuss. The only limitation right now is the lack of extra sounds or user-definable patterns, which brings us to the tractor roadmap which Native Instruments have published. Now, I really appreciate them doing this. After such an extended fallow period, it's nice to have an idea of what the company are working towards. Their version they posted seems a bit backwards to me, right? running from right to left, so let's break it down into sections. First up we have the stuff they've delivered in 3.6.0, the pattern player and the ozone limiter, both of which are only available to plus subscribers. Then we have things which are in active development, so hopefully that means coming pretty soon. For subscribers there will be more pattern player sounds with artist content packs. Then for all users there will be CDJ3000 jog wheel tracking improvements. This will be welcome for me, having used HID on the 3000s with Rekordbox and Serato extensively, they both feel better on those than Tractor does at this point. And then the big one for many, Apple Silicon support. Apple's switch to their own M1 and M2 chips has presented challenges and rewards for most software developers, and I'm fascinated to see how potentially fast and powerful a native version of Tractor could be. That's also coming for all users, as you might hope. We move on to the upcoming section, which means we're less clear about how urgently these features are being worked on. Both of them here are for plus subscribers only. There are plans for user customizable patterns in the pattern player, which makes a lot of sense. And they mentioned stem decks with the stem separation technology powered by Isotope. I've said before on this channel, I'm not entirely sold on the whole real time stems thing, at least not with any of the tech on the market today. But my mind remains open to it, so we'll see what Isotope can conjure up. Speaking of Isotope, they get a mention in the Priorities section too, with new effects coming to plus subscribers. Although they haven't been updated much in a long time, Tractor's existing effects have always been top notch, so I'm intrigued to see what they do in that area. For all users, NI are promising changes to the browser with high DPI support and new workflows. There are already a lot of things I like about the Tractor browser, but I know a lot of DJs are looking for changes, so that's a positive move. And finally, the big one, flexible beat grids. Honestly, I'm a little disappointed. It says in research, not in development, and if it was up to me, they would put every other thing on this roadmap behind flexible beat grids. It should be priority number one, in my opinion. I distinctly remember visiting the London office of Native Instruments back in 2016, desperately hoping they had flexible beat grids to show me then, and they didn't. That's now six years ago. It's not just about sync, although that's something I use all the time when playing just with X1 Mark IIs, but it's about effects and accurate looping too. So much of the software is simply a bit broken unless you're strictly playing quantized electronic music. So don't get me wrong, I'm happy to see it on this roadmap, I just wish it was a bit higher up the list. So there you go, we look at Tractor Pro 3.6, the new Pro Plus subscription plan and the roadmap which Native Instruments have laid out, pointing to the future direction of the software. Firstly, props to them for doing that, that is pretty much unprecedented in the industry and I'm very glad to see it as somebody who did think a while back that Tractor was on its way to just being dead because they seemed to just almost give up at one point on development of Tractor, it just went nowhere for a long time. And now we've got some real new impetus there from the company. So yeah, I'm happy about that because I do love Tractor. It still does a lot of things better than all of the competition. Things like MIDI mapping, untouchable when it comes to Tractor, but it has been lacking, you know, elastic beat grids. How long have we been talking about elastic beat grids inside Tractor? Literally 
years and years. And, but they are on the roadmap now. We know that, so that's exciting. And I love Native Instruments hardware as well. The tractor hardware, like the X1 Mark II, as far as I'm concerned, you can debate this with me in the comments, that is the best DJ MIDI controller ever made. Ergonomically and engineering-wise, that thing is an absolute masterpiece. So I'd love to get back to using one or two of those in the booth again. Absolutely, I would. Now, the thing that some people are going to take issue with is, of course, the whole thing about the subscription service. But you can't fight the tide, right? This is the way that things are going. Companies are funding future development of their products by doing subscription services. All the other big players do it. It's how it is now. But the thing is, I guess, with the Pro Plus, you don't have to have that. As long as they bring the important stuff like Elastic Beat Grids to the base version, then I won't really have a problem with that. If it's only going to be extra features, which some DJs will want and some won't, then I'm kind of cool with the subscription service from that point of view. But as always, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Are you a current Tractor user? Are you excited by these new developments or are you kind of put off? Are you a former Tractor user who's moved over to a different platform because you felt development wasn't moving enough? And if you do use Tractor, what hardware do you use with it? Do you agree with me about the X1 Mark II? Are you a person who's using like an all-in-one, like an S4 or something like that? Do let us know your thoughts. Thank you for watching this episode of Beat Source Tech. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it useful. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time.